Hello and welcome everyone. My name is Gillian Ayrns and I'm the Programme Manager for Adverse Events. And today's session we'll be looking at how to bring your data to life by using the reporting module within Datix. Firstly, I'd like to introduce you to the members of the Adverse Events team. Although some of you may already know us and or, or have had contact with us for something or other to do with Datix, but I always think it's good to put the faces to the names. So we've got Andy, who's our facilitator within the team, and we have Vicky, who's our coordinator, and we also have Flora, who's our assistant within the team. Now, as you can see, we also have a vacancy right now, um, and this role is for a coordinator just now, which we're hoping to fill in August, and that will bring us back to full resource within the team. Now, we're all contactable via the global email address or on MS Teams. But as well as ourselves as contacts, there's also our Director of Quality, Karen Cormack, and also our Head of Assurance, Laura Drummond, who are also happy to be contacted if you've got any questions at all. So looking at today's session, we'll be focusing on how to bring your Datex data to life. And what we'll be going through are the steps of how to report your data and demonstrate this by using the various charts. Also to allow you to capture the relevant information and perhaps to report on compliance or maybe to validate your quality improvement work, looking at some of the thematic analysis. But you'll also be able to monitor and measure your KPIs and to share any learning at all that you may get from this. So this slide shows you the, the various templates that are now that are all available within Datix. And I'm going to run through some of the examples of these just to give you an idea of what is out there and what you can use. So this first slide here gives us the cross tab report. Now, the cross tab report is a very quick and easy way to display your data by numbers on a table. Your data and your numbers on the one table and the examples that were shown in this slide are the top one is the number of falls recorded by area. This is a, what you would probably call as a high level report, and it's showing your four main areas within NHS Lanarkshire. Your bottom cross tab shows again the number of falls per area, but this time it includes the subcategories of the falls, and this provides a bit more information and detail on the actual fall itself. It gives you options you can see here of, for example, a controlled fall, fall from a height, etc. Another option is your bar chart. Now, the two examples of the bar chart shown in this slide. The top one we've used to display and show your top 10 category of incidents that have been recorded. Now, you may want to get a, an idea of what types of incidents have been recorded within your area, and this would be a good chart to use for that. Now, the bottom one is showing the number of incidents recorded each day of the week. This could be good to be used maybe to determine which day of the week the highest number of incidents are being recorded. And then we've also got your line chart. Now, we've used the example here of your category one incidents. So this type of chart would be used to look at your data over time and looking at your category one incidents recorded within your area each month. Another one is your pie chart. Now, this is another way that you could display your top 10 or your top five as an example. Although I wouldn't say that the pie chart is a type of chart that's promoted within the organisation, as you can get good information from your bar and your line charts, which are visibly easy to interpret. But it's another option if you wish to use it. So the next one is the Pareto chart. <clears throat> now this can be used for prioritising areas where improvement is needed, and it can identify what areas may need attention first. But I just want to point out that the Pareto chart that's produced from Datex does not have your double axis. Normally, as you know, it would have the percentage showing on the right hand axis. Although you can extract the data from Datex onto Excel, and include the double axis if it's required. So the next slide shows your options for your SPC chart. Now this is your statistical process control chart. 
And as you can see here, we've got the options of a C chart, an I chart, moving range and a run chart. So in here, we've shown a couple of examples of how these are produced from Datix. Now, these are control charts, much like your run charts, where you can monitor the data over time, with the centre line generally being the mean value of the data. Now, these can provide the benefits of a run chart, but include control limits. Now, you can have your upper and your lower control limit on your run chart, which can be a way of helping to indicate if the system is stable. We have here what they call is a gauge chart. Now, this is where you can set your own parameters on the system. So in here, for an example, we've set zero to 100 as being green. Now, this being the acceptable number of incidents being recorded, as an example. And then from 100 to 150 as amber. Now, amber being OK, but we need to keep an eye on it if the gauge is starting to, to go in that direction. And then we've got 150 plus, which is shown in the red. Now, the red would show an increase in the reporting of these incidents, which then would start to appear as be a highlight to show us there's a bit of concern here. Why are they going up and sitting in the red? And we would then need to do a bit of a more in-depth to have a look at the instance and see why there's so many being recorded. The other one we have here is what you call is a traffic light chart. Now, the example used here is based on your severity of incidents, which is your cat ones, cat twos and cat threes. And what it's shown us here is what we'd expect to see, as in the majority of the incidents are cat threes, which are in the green on this chart. But if the chart was starting to show a large section in red, representing your category ones, then again, this would be highlighting up to us as a concern and we will want to look into it in a bit more depth. What I would say is that this one and the gauge chart probably not as popular and may not be as useful as the other charts. But again, there are another visual aid to display your data and it's another available option if you want to use it. That's been the sort of whistle stop tour to demonstrate the capabilities of reporting from Datix and really just to give you an idea of the types of charts that are available. Although I think the most popular ones that are used are the bar charts and your line charts. But as you can see, there's lots of templates to choose from to demonstrate your data in whichever way is possible and suitable for you. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to now pass you over to Vicky, who will begin by showing you how to search and to start to produce reports. And then Andy will then go into a bit more detail on the, the reports themselves. OK, Vicky, I'm just going to hand over to yourself. Hi, thanks, Gillian. OK, I'll just share my screen. So hopefully you can see here um, the Datix login screen. To get to the Datix system, you would go in to first port, search applications, and then search for Datix on the drop down list. So this would be the screen that, the, that, that you would be taken to. So to log in, you will just type in your um, login name given by the Datix team and your password. So the first page when you log in that you're taken to is the landing page. So in this instance, we've only got access to incidents but some of you may have more modules. You may have access to the risk, risk register or you may have access to complaints. Um, so to explain this screen here, you can access pretty much all of your records from here. Um, some people may have verifier access for one ward area. Some people may be senior nurses or senior management who may have a number of areas under their remit. So if you know of an incident that is currently awaiting sign off, you would find this in the holding area. Now you would click on the tab and it would take in, but obviously in this instance we don't have one to look at, but that's how you would access it if you knew it was sitting in the holding area. 
a list for all um, the, the incidents in your area would be there. So um, we've got quite a number here under final approved because this is NHSL wide. So we would click on just to let you see how the list would, would present. And here it is, and it gives you all the various um, incidents. So to come back out of that, you select back at the bottom of the page. And incidentally, never use the back button at the top of the screen, the blue one, because that will actually take you out of Datix. So if you want to actually navigate the system to search for an incident or a number of incidents, you would select new search. This is going to bring you to the diff to search screen and with a number of fields, and this is all the fields that have been recorded at the time the incident was submitted. So you can see there's quite a number here. Any fields that has got a small drop down selection button on the right hand side means there's drop down selections available, all the different names of the verifiers and all the different areas within Lanarkshire. So all of these fields are filterable. So it means then if you are responsible for more than one area, you can filter down by um, different areas within your remit. So I'm going to show you how to search where you have the web reference number. You'll type in the web reference number in the reference number box, and you always need to prefix it with web. It doesn't need to all be in capitals. It's not case sensitive. So we type in web, and I'm just going to use one that we have here to let you see it. So if you know the reference number, you just you can either press the small magnifying glass in the bottom left hand corner to search, or you can scroll to the bottom of the screen and press the search button. But the magnifying glass is the easiest one to use. So you press search here, and it's going to bring you up a record. So to view this record, you can click on any of the fields in the listing page here, and that will take you into the incident detail. So this is just a test incident that we'll put on to allow you to see, um, get, to give you an example. So over in the left hand side here, we've actually got some fields that are highlighted in orange and if they're highlighted in orange it means there's data within them so the one you're in just now is obviously the name and reference section but you can click on to reporters and persons involved so that tells you who reported the incident who was the person affected and then any of the staff notified about the incident obviously this would be there could be quite a list here um, and if there's any notes or such like that somebody's made you can have it, you can find it in this section here. So to get out of this section, you, you press cancel and OK. And that takes you back to the listing page. So at this point, um, if you want to come back out into the incidents module, you would just press back. That brings you back to the diff 2 screen. Now, if you have an incident that um, that you don't actually have the reference number, but you know the timeline of when the incident occurred or the date. The, the field you can use here is the adverse event incident date. If you've got an actual date for when the incident occurred, then you would use the small calendar at the side and select the date at that point. It's best to get used to using the calendar because this field is uh, format sensitive. So if you type it in wrong, it will not recognize um, the your search criteria. So to give you an idea of how to filter down, um, say if we wish to look for all falls that occurred in Lanarkshire during the month of January 2017, we could do that um, easily by adding in, in the category field, slips, trips and falls. Now you can use the drop down here to look for this category. You would look down for slips, trips and falls. But that can be quite footery. So you could just type in slips here and select it. And um, you could then put the incident timeline that you wish to look for all falls. 
So we're going to, you can type it in here, but it's much easier um, to use a definition that we have for a timeline as at prompt. Now, basically, this means that when you press the search button, the system's going to prompt you for the date timeline that you're going to use. Equally, I'll point out before we do the search, if you only wanted to look at all falls that were um, final approved, you could select final approved here or any falls that are awaiting approval. Any of these fields can be selectable and fil filterable. So, so we're just going to do the search here just now. And this is going to hopefully bring us up the timeline uh, prompt. So here we're going to look for January 2017, 1st of January to the 31st of January 2017. And let's press continue. So we can see we've got 394 records. This means that there's been 394 slips, trips and falls that have occurred across Lanarkshire during the month of January 2017. Um, you could go down this list and click on each of the incidents, but that's quite laborious to do that, um, but it can be done that way. Or you could press back to take you back to the search screen. But what I'm actually going to do here is I'm going to pull this information out into a report, a very basic cross-tab report. So you would select design a report from the tabs on the left-hand side. And the cross-tab report is the second one here on the second row. And you can see the, the report designer is saying it's current criteria. And what that basically means, that that search you've just carried out a few seconds ago has been held in the background and this is what your report is going to be based on. So we're going to give this report a title um, because we're going to be saving this into the My Reports area so that you can use it at a later date if you particularly like this type of report. So if you give the report a meaningful name, And we're going to put in category so that we can identify that as the category for searching upon. The timeline is already in because the, we have done the search. So now we need to build the report. So for the rows, and this is the data that's going to run down the page, we're going to select incidents for form. And if you're working in the incidents module for any of the form selections is always going to be incidents. Obviously, if you're working with the risk uh, searches, it would be risk you would search on or complaints. That, you know. So here we're going to look at um, for the rows. We're actually going to look for op division. So we're going to divide down NHSL falls by op division. So you can type that into the field and then double click it when it appears. And then for the columns, so that the fields that are going to present across the page, we're going to select category. So our timeline is already in. So that's all we need to do at this point. So you would select run report. So you will see here your report results. Um, for across the whole of Lanarkshire, all falls divided up into operating divisions. Now, if you want to have a bigger view of your screen, you can hide the report designer by pressing on the blue, the, the navy box with the chevrons. So you can actually look at the data within the slips, strips and falls for each of these areas by clicking on the number and that will take you right into the data. But we'll not do that just now, but it would take you right to the listing page and then you can click in to each individual record to view the incident detail. And then you would press back to get back to this 
area in the report. So if you particularly like that report, you can actually export it out into Excel. There's various ways of pulling the, the data out. So to do that, you would press export. Make sure Excel is selected and you could export it out. So we would open this up. And there's your data here. So you could then save that and send it on to your team or uh, work with it out with the system. Or else, if you particularly like the report, you could add the report to your My Reports area in your account. This means that it's only yourself that can access this report, but it's useful if you're going to be running it on a monthly basis. So before you save it, always remember to select the prompt setting, prompt for values when running report. If you don't do that, anytime you run the report in the future, you're always going to get this data here because it's fixed for January 2017. So this is a really important field here. So we'll save that. And we should see, hopefully, yeah, here we go. We have got the report saved in to your report, my reports area. So if we click, click on that just now. I'm going to run the report again, but I'm going to change the timeline. So you can see here, we've got the title here, NHSL category, and it's saying criteria saved against the report. But because we put that app prompt in, it's asking us to put in the new dates. So we're going to type in for February. We don't need to change any of the rows or columns. And we'll update the report. So now we have got 417 records uh, shown for February 2017 for all slips, trips and falls across Lanarkshire. Now we can actually uh, filter down within this report. We can actually take it down into the types of slips, trips and falls. Uh, it could be a controlled fall or a fall from height or an assisted fall. You may want to know a wee bit more detail. So at this point, we can do this by selecting in the drill down box above. So what we would type in here would be a subcategory. You'll get used to the different categories. Um, there is a lot available, but you'll obviously be working with similar ones um, on a regular basis. So subcategory here. And then what we would do, we would run the report again. And you can see, oh no, I missed a step here, subcategory. You have to you have to select slips, trips, and falls. And that is going to show you the breakdown of slips, trips, and falls. So here we go, each operating division across Lanarkshire with the types of fall. And I can point out here it's one less than the last report, and that's because the subcategory field would not have been filled in at that at the time the incident was added. So here you can, if you particularly like this style of report and you want to keep this one in addition to the category report that you run earlier, you can change um, the name to subcategory. And you want to save as new. We'll run the report first. And at this point, you want to save as new. Again, remember to change the prompt for values when running report and save it. So now we've got two reports. We'll get one for category, one for subcategory. We'll just take you back into the subcategory report just now. And um, we'll put in February state again, just to let you see that it's all, all the data still there. 
so there's there's many ways to navigate the system and many ways to pull reports. It's a case of playing about with the system in the report section. You can't actually break anything. So um, if you can just have a wee mess about with it, and if it's not pulling out the data that you want to pull out, um, you can contact the Datix team, and we'll all be happy to assist you to find um, to produce the reports in a format that you would like to to run. So that's the data again. There you can see it's it's came back. Um, so at this point here, um, all of this information is covered in the handout that we've got, but I'm going to pass you over to Andy, and Andy's going to show you the next section of the training, um, and it all relates to the different style of reports that are available. OK, thanks, Vicky. Okay. I'll just share my screen. I'll just share. OK, so when I'm running a report, I like to think of it as kind of two main steps. So you've got the, the search and then building the, the report on top. So say, for example, you've got, a, I don't know, a quality improvement project and you're looking at the reporting of transfer problems. So just start off with a, a new search. And that will just bring you the, the blank form up. Now we'll use the, the app prompt statements again because that means when we come to save the query, you can reuse them and you can change maybe like the, the unit or like your, your incident date. So we'll just put in the app prompt here. Uh, we're looking at transfer problems, so we'll just select transfer under category. Again, you can just start typing. Highlight it in green, just double click it to populate the field. Or just use the at statement. An incident date. And as Vicky highlighted, this toolbar just stays here, so it doesn't matter where you, you scroll down or up, it stays here, so it's really nice. So we can just hit on the, the search. And that will just bring up the, the fields that you've asked it to prompt to. So, for example, you can you can multi pick in here. So even if you do. Let's look at the, the hospitals so you can highlight these, just click highlight them and then double click them into the field. For this example, we'll just use a uh, monk limbs. And then again, just using the, the calendar, we'll just get our, our dates. That's your start date in. And your, your end date. So once you've completed that, just hit continue. And that will just give you your, your records here. So that's you've done the, the first main stage. So you've completed your search and you've got your, your data. So now you're ready to build the, the report on top. Um, so if you just click on design a report. And then as highlighted previously by Jilling, we've got many different styles of, of report here uh, within Datix. So the first one that we'll look at, just have a look at the, the run chart. So it's under the SPC chart. Again, so you can give it a, a title. It's, you can see that we've got red stars. So these are you have to fill these out, these are mandatory. You don't have to give it a title. Um, your query, Vicky mentioned, the current criteria, that's what you've just searched on, so that's OK. So with the SPC report types we've got, there's four different ones in here. But we'll just look at the run chart. Just select that. And so again, just select an instance, because this is the module you're working in. Uh, for the field for this one, we'll look at um, incident date. So we can start typing that in. And just select that. Within the incident date, you've got different date options. You've got day, of the week, week number. For this one, just use month and year. 
And so once you've selected everything, just run report. And that will just bring you your data up. So just drag that out. So each of these points, these are, you can go into them. So you can click into these to show you. And that will just bring you the, the instance behind each of them. Uh, to navigate back, just click on the back button. Now it'll just bring you back to the chart. Now you'll notice that it's the mean in here, but you can actually export this to Excel and we can change that. So we're going to export, put it into Excel. And that will open up. So it's you've got the, the mean labelled here. We can see that 6.91 or 92, if you like, the mean. But to calculate the median, so maybe we'll, we'll change the header here, median. Just click off here, click on the, the function, click into median, click OK. And then we'll just select the data that you want to calculate the median on. Click the down arrow and that populates the, the field here. Click on OK. So that calculates it to be seven. So what we'll do is we'll just change this to seven in here and just drag that down. And that'll be seven all the way down. And then we'll go back to the graph. You can see we've changed the label median and now it's the value of seven. It's just come out of here. So the next chart we'll look at is the, the bar chart. So there's various options in here. Uh, we've got like horizontal, we've got stacked ones. We'll just look at the, the vertical graph. So in this example, we'll do day of week. So for your QI project, you might be wanting to see when the incidents are, are reported. So we'll just update report. So it's nice and simple in Datix. You can change your chart, change your options, update the report, and then your chart just is displayed for you. So you can see here at this, the start of the week, you've got most of your instances are reported. It might be that you're looking to improve the, the reporting of the instance at the, in the like, later in the week and at, at the weekend. So this and using this graph or bar chart, you'll be able to get that information. Again, just dragging this back out. So another chart that you could use uh, maybe the, the PETO, so if you wanted to see where your, your incidents are reported, use the, the PETO chart. We'll just change their, the field. So just location type. And then again, just update report. And this will give you your PETO chart. I uh, generally mentioned we don't have the, the double axis here. But that's not a problem. So if you just export that, Excel, export. So if you just highlight your chart, um, click on to insert, if you click into the, the histogram, and then you can see the, the Pareto chart, click on that, and then this just aligns it with the, the double axis using the percentages. If you don't need it, then obviously you don't need to use this step, but the, that's the, the steps to, to get to the Pareto chart with your, your double access with the percentages. OK. So. I'll show you how to, to navigate back. Um, so go back here. So if you click into incidents and then do list search results. So you've got your, your listing in here. Now you can save your, your this listing. So what we'll do, we can just do save the current search of the query. And we'll just list this as. So that's for problems. We'll just label it at prompt and then you know that it's got the, the prompt in it and save. Okay, okay. 
So if you go into your, your list, and sorry, into your um, incidents and into the saved queries, you can see, I'll just start typing this, your transfer problem query. You can run that and then fill out if you had like a, a different set of um, information that you wanted to add in, you can just follow through the steps. Um, so we'll just move on to, so looking at like KPIs now, so if we drop down into my report, so it might be a, a report that's already saved for you, and um, maybe it's you've requested it um, through Datix to set up, or it might be something that you've saved yourself through using the, the steps that Vicky showed you. So we'll go into the commissioned SAERs. So these are kind of like a, a one a one step report almost. You click into them, they've got the, the query already saved. All you'd need to do is just add in your dates. So again, we'll just do January. And And then everything else is you've got your incident date, month and year in there, just update report. And you get your yearling chart. So again, these points, these are all, you can click into them and you can see the, the instance behind. It's the same with all the, the, the charts, you know, like within your bar chart or your, your preto, you can click into all the, the points to see the, the instance behind them. Um, also, so just have a wee look at the bar chart again. So if we select that, we'll do maybe you want to have a real look at what type of incident. So within the package report, it doesn't mean that you have to keep this. So we can do like category and change the, the parameters. We'll select the category and even like say like a, a top 10 category and then just update report. And that will just give you your report there, uh, your top 10 categories reported. You can also, if you want to display this differently, we mentioned this previously, like as a, a pie chart. Click into here, it's got a couple of, you can have an exploded view or you can have just a standard view. Um, so I'll do just change that and update report again. And this just shows you another display. So what's quite good, like if you find, maybe if you get like a, a really narrow segment in the pie chart and you find it's hard to click into, it's quite good because you can just click into each of the segments and they pop out. They don't, I don't think they export like this, but Excel does a, a, its own exploded view. But that brings me to the end of um, my section. So um, thanks for, for listening. And Thank you, Andy, and thanks, Vicky, as well. I hope everybody enjoyed the session and I hope you found it helpful. But as we've mentioned before, we're available um, to give any bespoke or tailored training specifically for any specialty or service or area, um, just please feel free and contact us. And I would just like to say thank you again, everyone. Thank you. Bye-bye.